Cool. Really cool. Every 10 or 15 years, a film is produced that is so overwhelming, so forceful in its impact, that it becomes deeply embedded in the mind. Persons under 18 will not be admitted. make this experience more enjoyable for everyone. We hope you'll refrain from crying during the show. Enjoy the movie. Thank you. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. 
<laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey, hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. You're watching Still Talking With. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. We have an awesome show scheduled for you, as always. And we have Mr. Benjamin. Yo, caught me on yep. my phone. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm super psyched about tonight. I'm just going to leave it there. I, I just want to get into it. Okay. Sounds good. Jeffrey. Happy Wednesday. It's been raining for three fucking days. I'm yeah. sick of the wet weather. Oh, I love the wet weather. But tomorrow's going to be gorgeous. Right? That's what I hear. Well, it's tomorrow's going to be gorgeous. Change. You know, so I'm going to go out and play with some wood. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we got a great show for you tonight. Um, I've been looking at this and, and thinking, how can I really fuck this up? But you know what? I'm going to try not to. Let's, let's, let's welcome the bird man, Falk and Shell. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. How you doing? I'm doing good. It's getting yeah. cold over here. We just switched from from summer to winter in a day in Oregon. So, oh snow. yeah, right. Winter is coming. Oh, I'm not looking forward to it. I love now, it. Ben, you're muted. There we go. That's better. There you go. I was gonna. I said Nothing you actually want to listen to you, but you know. Hey, Leo, you can mute him anytime you want tonight. Just no, just no, 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 no. But you like winter, from what I understand. Yeah, skiing. I was gonna say you like to ski cross country, tooling around with the jeep, getting stuck in the snow. There's some cozy about it. You know, I lived in LA for 14, 14 years. It just gets boring, you know, like if it's the same all year long, you just don't appreciate it. So this is like, it, I just like the change, I think. Right. I'll get tired of the winter. Don't get me wrong. But by yeah. that time, it's like spring is here. And then it's something Well, new. it gives you something to look forward to. That's the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the and only thing. Chopping wood. The only thing you get stuck in in L.A. is the traffic. Yes. Every day. <laughs> and, and there's well, some... I could think of a couple other things that like you could get stuck in in L.A., but I'm not going to mention them. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's something calming about like a nice fresh coat of snow you know it, it's you got right. the, just the, the it's like there's it absorbs the sound it's extra quiet yeah it's like calm it's like you don't have to meditate it does it for you yeah totally and everything is clean yeah it right. just yeah. looks clean as long as you don't maybe eat not in new york, york. That's true. Well, that's true. As soon as snow hits the ground in New York, it just turns brown and black anyway. So, yeah. You said uh, you, you know. said you like chopping wood. I do like chopping wood. Nice. It's an odd, it's an odd thing to like, but I was really excited when I left LA and I finally had a house that had space for a wood chopper. And I got myself an axe and just wood chopping and snow shoveling. Nice. Mm. Not, nothing wrong with that. I no, mean, not, no, not at all. No. I actually, I actually love to chop wood. Right? Yeah. I used to. It's still meditative. You know? Makes you feel to. manly. Now it hurts. You know. You know. What do you What do you use to split wood with? Do you use a split maul, or do you just use a regular axe? Just regular axe, but like a heavier one for you know bigger bigger chunks and a lighter one for okay. just fire. I, I picked up myself one of them um, double sided Paul Bunyan ones. I just love like that thing. Just like butter. Well, what you do is like, you know how sometimes you'll get it stuck? Right? Yeah. Put another log on and use the other side. Oh, that I've never done that. Oh. That makes sense. You got more weight and now it's easier to chop. And it'll <laughs> split both of them. It's awesome. Nice. I love playing with wood. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? When, uh... <laughs> Oh my! Growing up, Leo. no, no. I, I was just gonna say, growing up on a farm, my my dad uh, built a a, a a wood chopper out of um, with a hydraulic press. So we he would just throw the log on there, and it that's just, just lazy, though. 
It's smart. No, because, dude, the amount of wood that we chopped, I mean, we we would go logging for, you know, a couple weekends, get several cord. Right. Yeah, it's, and, yeah, I, mean, you know, I, split, I split wood for a campfire, <laughs> not to heat my house. Oh, yeah, no, no. I, I, yeah, we, we, we did it to heat the house. And, uh, but, you know, it, it was fun growing up. You know, uh, we, we'd get a truckload of wood and, you know, driving down the highway, he'd put me in the back of the truck to hold down the wood. <laughs> <you know? laughs> he was like, let me see how many bumps I can hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's still here. He's still here. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Right, how so, uh, derail uh, this now so now you know what we like, Falk. I love it. Yeah, we derail real quick. It's like hanging out with the boys. I love it. Yeah. You know? uh, before we get into it, uh, for everybody watching or listening, definitely check the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us, for our amazing guest. And you have a new movie that came out just recently, Swap Me Baby. Mm -hmm. uh, that's out on VOD. Is it getting a physical release? Uh, no, it's not. We didn't go to theaters. I, th I think we might be doing Blu-rays a little bit. Uh, but no, we, we started on Amazon and iTunes and all that. And then in October, just now we released on Tubi and uh, some of the other, uh, AVOD, right? I always mix up SVOD and AVOD. AVOD. It's not one AVOD. of them, folks. Okay. Yeah, you know, right. they're on both now. So there you go. All right, that's um, cool. I, yeah. Is that a full length feature? It's a full length feature. It's, it's a, a good old, uh, body swap concept, but we wanted to do an adult version of it. So you got on one hand, this more uptight very busy uh, real estate lady and on the other hand a mushroom tripping long curly hair uh gigolo french gigolo and they they get pregnant by accident the movies about them having to figure out how to be parents and they swap bodies so i play the lady in my body and my my baby mama who was pregnant at the time eight months um she plays the french mushroom tripping gigolo for most of the movie it was a blast one of the right, best times I've had on it. That is fucked up in so many it ways. Is, is First up. thing we wondered is when do we show this to our son and do we ever? Right. <laughs> so Actually, it is on Tubi. I'm yeah. going to watch. I'm going to have to watch that. That's sounds Yeah, like check it out. It's really fun. It's a really fun rom-com. And, you know, we, we produce it right after uh, the election. Not talking about politics, but just timeline. Uh, COVID had, was at its height at that time. And we're like, what's something that can just make people connect right. and have a laugh and just kind of go, you know what? There's a lot of good in life. Like, let's just get along. Right. And you so, came up with Swap Me, baby. That's that's what we came up with. <laughs> Listen, it was the pandemic. We've been locked in. Right. You know? I get it. We had to make well, some. Like, you must be well, doing something right because you have a 71% on Rotten Tomatoes. So you're doing awesome. Nice. Right? Yeah. So we actually have the trailer, don't we, Leo? We do. Here we go. Let's show the trailer. How did this happen? Uh, he's, um... We had the sex. He's an escort. The condom broke. <laughs> Wait, you paid for this? I mean, no offense. Oh, none taken. I have something that could help you spend the weekend here. Trust me. Welcome to the Baby Making Podcast. I really need you to listen to this. Something to consider, breast milk isn't vegan. Come on. I'm doing all of this for our baby. So am I. Taking mushrooms is not planned for a baby, Felipe. Oh. You must work together. I can't keep doing these stupid challenges. I would like my body back. Forget all that. Enjoy the moment. All I ever try to do is figure out what to do, and I still don't know what I'm doing ever. 
Nobody knows what they're doing. No matter how crazy things are around you, it's all gonna be okay. We are something more than friends. We are something more than friends. We are something more. We are something more than friends. Oh my god. I have a penis! See? Get it off! Ah, no, no. Don't flap it like that! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Almost oh, like yeah. Hawkman. You know, I figured I'd just keep going in the trajectory of my career and do that next. Why not? <laughs> right, right. That it's actually looks funny where I'm at. Awesome. Just saying. Thank you. That looks yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to watch that. You said so it's, something. it's available on uh, VOD right now. So if people want to like rent it on Amazon and uh, uh, it's coming to Tubi, you said? Yeah, it is on Tubi now as well. Oh. Nice. Very cool. If you want to save your money and watch some commercials, go to Tui. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Leo. Appreciate but, it. Oh. But we suggest you watch it on VOD because, you know, film's not free to make. I'm just saying. Just That's saying. true. But they're both, you know, they're both income just revenues. Saying. That's a whole interesting thing, how films are making money these days. It's it's wild and difficult. Right. So yes, now with do, Tubi, do isn't it like you get you get paid by like how many commercials actually play on Tubi? Yeah, I think it's like by views, how many commercials are put <laughs> on, and you know, it's one of those. I don't know their calculations. I'll find out. Yeah, yeah. So I know I noticed some really cool like moves you had going there. Was that from your background in uh, ballroom dancing? That or was dancing, the... I should say. Yeah, I know no, you no, no, ballroom, ballroom is ballroom. You went way back. That's where I started. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing that you see in the trailer on the log, that was literally a little uh, homage to Dirty Dancing. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. I'm old enough. Yeah, we're all old enough. <laughs> it's a good movie. Rest in peace, Patrick. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, we pulled a little bit from that. Gotten older, but still got a little bit. Right, right. Nice. So are you still dancing regularly? Or is it no, not really. Like, to be really honest, no. it's like the last the last real like professional dancing I did was in um street dance, which was almost ten years ago. And then after that I kinda kinda fell off. Okay. It's just too hard on the body after after yeah. ten, fifteen years, it's like uh Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Knees stop moving in ways that they weren't supposed to and shit like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you, I mean, you had a, a decent career in dance as well because you did backup dancing for some decent names out there. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was my way into Hollywood. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't find a direct way in in Germany. We don't have a lot of, there's not a lot of industry and especially for kids. Right. Um, and so I, because of Patrick Swayze and, and a lot of the other actors who had a dance training background and found their way into it, um, that's sort of where I landed. And then that, that got me to the States. Eventually I was, I was dancing for the support act of Justin Timberlake's first solo tour. And as uh, so I met the choreographers for Justin and the dancers, and they were like, come out to LA, you'd, you'd enjoy it here. And once I landed in LA acting was to be had everywhere. Uh, right. and so it was easy then to, to make the transition. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So you, and you actually made a very, quick in big transition when you started acting because didn't you debut uh on arrested development did i yeah that, that, was, that was half dance half half acting that was i don't know what year that was 2005 2005 yeah, was good. <laughs> <laughs> boom 2005 huh man 2005 my timeline's all covid just it destroyed my i sense for time like i don't know anymore what year is it um <laughs> yeah, that was that was the first like TV gig for me, and it was based on dancing. I think we auditioned as dancers, and then we were given some lines and had these characters. That was a fun job. Um, and then, then there was nothing for a while. Then I did a small show called Journeyman, played Thug Number Three, I believe, or maybe four. <laughs> one uh, of them. One of them. I was one of the thugs. One, one of the thugs. One of the. The bruisers, and then, uh, yeah, and then again, nothing. It, it was tough, man. I, I didn't, I couldn't quite get it done. Like, I couldn't get an agent, I couldn't get any auditions for student films, I just couldn't get arrested at all. And then, I 
actually produced a short film, mm -hmm. which gave me my first footage I could even use for reel. So my whole demo reel was just stuff from my own short film. And then my neighbor who I play poker with, Pam, if you see this, bless your heart. Thank you so much. She hooked me up with my first manager. Um, and then I got an agent and then very quickly followed night and day. Yep. Um, and then again, nothing after night and day for a while. Went back to being a stripper in Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> that, is, that is a fact. Channing it paid, it, it paid the bills. Huh? It paid the bills. Paid the bills. And it's nighttime, so you can have your life. And it paid, you know, paid enough to live in L.A. back then. Um, yeah, and then street dance was, I think, sort of like the real moment of like, okay, like this is a career. I don't have to strip anymore. I can uh or any other job i've been thankfully living off of that since then although i just watched a trailer and you stripped in that so yeah, i was just gonna I, say i was gonna say i don't think it's out of your blood right <laughs> Listen, no, no, i'm, I'm not, east yeah. german we our culture we just like nudity i'm just i'm just you know usually free balling when i can nothing <laughs> hey Wait, he he actually got Leo to shake his head, and I think actually Leo turned a little red there. <laughs> <laughs> you said everything is a go, but politics. Are, oh know. yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. It's a go, man. Usually it's you Jeff know. that gets Leo to shake his head and turn red, but this time it was the guest. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's got a nice ass. I'm gonna say that. Thank oh, you, Jesus. Where are you guys sitting, by the way? Where where are you located? Uh, Don't I'm everybody talk at once. <laughs> uh, I'm in Connecticut. Connecticut? Yep. I, I'm in America's hometown, Plymouth, Mass. Okay. Where, where the pilgrims and, supposedly landed. Yep. Okay. And I'm about 20 minutes from Plymouth in a cow country called Halifax. Halifax, nice. It's actually horse country. Yeah. I, I love Massachusetts. Haven't seen much, but like that reminds me a lot of Europe. That's like a, a climate that I really dig. Yeah. It's, it's and and, and it's you can nice. say you hate Connecticut. Everybody else does. <laughs> yeah, well, it's in Connecticut, but I feel like it's similar, right? It is. The it only is. difference it's, is it's, it's similar. There's beautiful parts of Connecticut. I razz on Connecticut all the time. It's five times higher to live though. through it. Well, yeah, I don't want to hate the fucking drive, drive through it. It sucks. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's like driving you know, through a city, but it's a state because it's all traffic. Oh um, man. Yeah, but we have you know cow pastures as well, but. Oh no, I've been to I've been to the hills and shit. It's absolutely oh, yeah. beautiful. Yep. We filmed in Connecticut. Mm. Yeah, yes, we did. There's yes, a lot of like rich, pompous people, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. Leo's not one of them though. No. No. Nope. He's one of the poor pompous yeah. people. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh, Go ahead. I, I'm I'm not gonna hog all the questions. Well, well, I'm just gonna, you know, do you like do you like wearing a mask and being a bird? Um, yeah, I did. I, I, you know, I'm pretty outspoken about it. Not not being an easy experience. Like it wasn't like, yay, I get to do this and everything was perfect. Um, there was a lot I wanted to do I didn't get to do. You know, there was, uh, it was such a fast moving project. Because they got greenlit, I think, based on that trailer that they made. I don't know if you remember that. They had like this mock-up trailer with Rip Hunter and a couple of the, the teammates. And then the show was greenlit. And it was go, go, go. And it was a show with nine superheroes, eight to nine superheroes. And then the crossover. So the stuff I wanted to do with Hawkman, I think it's such a cool character. You know, like so many lifetimes. And, and I believe it was supposed to lead into a show for Hawk or Hawkman. By the time I arrived, they had already nixed that, I think. But so yeah, there was just there was just a lot of opportunities missed that I was really sad about, and 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 uh, that were difficult difficult for me to give up. But I got to fly around. I got to like be lifted off of the you know ground sixty feet high, and you know be a kid, kid just pretending oh pew 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 ah, you know. Right. Uh, how can I complain about that? And it was you know I made some lifetime friendships on that. That's awesome. Which is, you know, worth everything. Um, so, yeah, I had a good time. Huh. Was well, it physical? It looked like, it, you know. That was uh, part of what I was. Physical, like, yeah. it, it was physical. Um, but, A, the flying got nixed uh, a month in 
because Mace Runner 2, they had this big accident with the lead where he broke his face. And that was Warner Brothers. So we got the memo that unless it's, you know, six feet off the ground and stationary, I can't do it anymore. So that was gone. And I loved it. I mean, it was so fun. They had different harnesses so that you could bank, you Mm -hmm. know, that you could really move well in it. And then the other thing is on the TV show, they just sometimes there's these big fights. uh, And I've I've been a martial artist and training that stuff, acrobatics forever. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, And then it was like, yeah, we just shot that big fight scene with your stunt double because you were in makeup and hair and we had to do it now. So there was disappointment on that. And too, I was like, damn it. Um, But besides that big fight in the pilot, Mm -hmm. at the war where they're selling the warheads and all that, and we're busting in on that. Besides that big fight, I, I think I got to do most of it. Yeah, most of what you see is is me. Well, you, Hawkman as a character has been like gaining momentum. Like, you know, TV-wise, I think we first saw him on Smallville. Uh, and then enter you with the Berlantiverse, and then you had Hawkman and Titans, and now in Black Adam. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Berlantiverse is still going strong. Do you think there's a chance that, you know, you may come back? Maybe. Who knows? I mean, I've been openly talking about how I kind of have my problems with it. So maybe not. <laughs> um, no, I hope so, dude. I hope so. I, I, you know, I hope they do that character justice. You know, I, I would have loved to see in a show like in the medieval times like set in a time where that mace and the wings actually had some like definite strong power. You know, he could take out a bunch of battalions of, of archers from the sky, whatever. And then again, just that whole mythology of having seen humanity evolve. And how does he feel about that? You know, like to me, there was always a bit of, we totally lost Jeff. Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> I, I had. I'm sorry. I had to. I, I had you're good. To you're good. Me. I'll just talk to the, to Leo Ben. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but but um, you know, there there's so much to explore that I hope they make that show, and I hope they make a show where sorry. they focus on the the human aspect. And I'll be honest with you, that's my biggest problem at the moment with the superhero bonanza. There's so much of it, but um. So little time spent on the human aspect, you know. I'm a bit tired of the it's the coolest fight sequences I've ever seen. I'm like, yeah, and then what, you know? Um, and I think Hawkman and Hawk Girl, that, that story is very rich with character. And they should, whether I'm a part of it or not, but I think they really should give Hawkman uh, a, a bigger platform and explore his world, you know. Yeah, I I mean, you know, they made him the main, well, one of the main characters in, in Black Adam. And hopefully that gives a resurgence because you, you are right. Hawkman's, uh, you know, an incredible character and definitely a ton of history with all the, you know, uh, um, uh, what the hell is it when they come back to life? Um, uh, the Thanagarians? Well, no, that's. No, I mean the, uh, well, anyway, you know, living several lifetimes. Oh, reincarnation, uh, yes. Yeah, reincarnation. Yeah, yeah. My my mind is mush. Ah. <laughs> um, the you reincarnation know, isn't caught up yet. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hopefully it, there's some resurgence of uh, you know, yeah. um, you know, bringing it back because, I mean, uh, DC's under all new management now, and <laughs> and you have uh, James Gunn that's now head of uh, movies and TV. So hopefully, oh shit, yeah, yeah that's yeah. nice. Yep, they just announced that over the weekend. It was uh, James Gunn, and I forgot what the other guy's name is. Uh, he worked on like the Annabelle movies and uh, Conjuring and stuff. Um, but yeah, they they're like the Kevin Feige of uh, DC now. Wow! So um, you know, Leo's did not know that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Yeah, I didn't know that either. But worst case, I mean, you do write, direct, and produce stuff. You could always do a fan film and do it I... your way. I did a fan film, actually. I'm uh, saying with Hawkman, bringing him I back did. to the mid- medieval time. Really? Oh, no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't have the budget for that. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, just at least the character of, like, having been around this long, uh, I think I would definitely love to tell a story like that. You know, nice. otherwise you get into the whole territory of, like, uh, brand, sorry, what's it called, trademark and all that. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to get into right. it with DC about that. But Right, right. Well, that's why you have to do a fan film. 
Right. But then you make no money. You're doing appearances. I guess so, yeah. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You can't make money off the actual movie. No. But appearances, I believe you can. No, but if you do it for the love of the character, like you were saying, bringing it back mm-hmm. to the medieval times with the mace and the wings. I mean, I just so you, I, can, I can ride a horse. Uh, dude. You ride horses? <laughs> uh, I don't have horses, but I, I have ridden horses, and I'm not afraid uh, to ride them. That's I'm not afraid to get knocked off of them either. You know, that was a hint. <laughs> Listen, that's part of why I want to put it in the medieval times. I've been dying to do a project with horses, uh, getting to ride some horses and doing some cool stuff with it. So, yeah, let's do it. There you well, go. <laughs> we'll, we'll rent uh, King Richard's Fair. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't think they'll give us their horses, but. <laughs> well, no, you I... have to find your own horses. But... Well, I have family in Florida that has horses, so. I know people around here that have horses. Right. Yeah. I'm horses here too. Let's combine them. We'll, just, we'll, we'll make Lord of the Rings. The more horses, the better. <laughs> we need more horses. So, so... <laughs> Jeff, uh, Jeff, else, brought... you got any horses? <laughs> uh, Jeff brought up a, a good point. Appearances. You know, yeah. have you been uh, uh, going to cons? You know, uh... I did. Yeah, the first, the first, I would say, like. The first two years were great, and then the I, I did him. I think for three to four, and then it just kind of dies down. You know, it wasn't the main character in the show, and uh, yeah, it just sort of like fizzled. And I I had a bit of a thing too where I was like, oh, I don't want to. There's nothing wrong with it, but personally, I was like, uh, I want to talk about something else. You know, like this is a while back now, and, and again too because I have such a split relationship to it. Like I am beyond grateful for it. And also, you know, especially at that time, had a little bit of a chip on my shoulders. And you don't want to, you don't want the fans to know that. Not to know that. I'm happy to talk about it. But right, right. You you don't want to poo poo on anything. And so, I was running out on holding that in. Um, so it was time to just sort of like quit the circuit. Right, right. But being on the circuit didn't ha- doesn't necessarily mean you have to be on the circuit just as Hawkman. You've been in a ton of stuff. I well, mean, yeah. you've been in a bunch of movies that I personally love, like White House Down. I love that. Yeah, movie. you promote you and what you've done, not the movie that you've been in. Right, yeah. right. You promote yourself right. as the person with all this behind you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, that that number came up. I had a you know I have an agent that does that, but the most people that showed up for it were all you know showing up for. For Hawkman, the well, it, it. It, that, that does kind of make sense because it's a DC type thing. But it was because, the big, right. you know, right. crowd drawer, I guess. Right. But then they right. then they learn about the other stuff you've been in. Yeah, and there was the random person that was like with the street dance thing or you know White House Down, where I was like, oh, cool, you know, like it's, yeah. it's really fun. Well, I, I mean, enjoy. another one, White Extraction. House Down is one of my favorite movies. Ex- anyway, Extraction. So. I, I mean, I loved Extraction. I'm you waiting for the section. Well, yeah. Oh, that was a fun movie. That was, that was yeah. another really fun film. Yeah. You know, I loved it. I mean, they're, they're talking about Extraction 2. I don't know when it's due out, but I'm like, yeah. It was just a great movie. Nice. Yeah. I wonder if you're talking, are you talking about our Extraction or are you talking about Chris Hemsworth Extraction? Oh, I've seen them both. Oh, shit. Okay. So, yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I love it. No, I had so I much fun. When I go, what is this? And I'll watch like the first fifteen minutes. If it doesn't grab me, it's next. And, and I watch some really weird, weird shit that way. It, but some really good stuff too. It just like that with his horror films. Are you, yeah, a, are you yeah. a horror aficionado? No, I just love horror flicks. Oh, I love them too. And I watch all kinds. I, you know, uh, what's your favorite? Slasher, I, oh, um, I love the slasher films. Um, say what your favorite is, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, don't fuck in the woods. Don't fuck in the woods. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's on Tubi, correct? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it was it on was. Tubi. <laughs> fuck in the woods. That's a title yeah. right there. Yeah. And actually, I believe they just made part two to that. I heard they were working on it. I don't know. Yeah, because I actually had a link somewhere in my emails for uh, for that producer. You know, but I do have to say that that's my favorite movie for like total one hundred percent off the wall horror. 
Nice. Just stupid, you know, kill the naked lady kind of horror. Mm-hmm. Does it and have a story comedy, li- comedy to it or is it full? <laughs> oh, no. Well, the, yeah, it's one of those, you know, yeah, you laugh at it as she's getting ripped apart because it's so stupid kind of movies. Yeah. If you know? uh, if you're looking for a good horror comedy, though, definitely check out uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Oh, I love Tucker and Dale versus Evil. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, that genre I really dig. You know, Cabin in the Woods, uh, Tucker and Dale. Yeah. Uh, what was the What was the James Gunn one? Slither. Was it Slither? Slither. It it sounds familiar. That, yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah I, right. it might be. Um, I remember watching Slither. I'm, I'm horrible with names of movies and like names of people. <laughs> it's like I see their faces and I see the flick and I go, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's what." It is. There was a new one we saw. Uh, the guys at Dark Discussion brought me to it, and it was supposed to be like a horror comedy, but I totally didn't get it. Uh, bodies, bodies, bodies. Oh, I just saw a poster somewhere for that online. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it, it's it felt it's either making fun of like uh, the younger generation or like I was way too old to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, we'll go, we're we're going to go with the latter. Yeah, yeah I, I watched a movie. It was um, the 50 best horror movies you've never heard of. That was a movie in itself, like a documentary? Yes. yes. Hmm. Yep, the 50 best horror movies you've never heard of. Yeah, check that out, too. Right, right. You know, know, can I mean, it, you know some of the stuff in there that I already heard. You know, Wait. Sorority Girl Massacre and, you know, that kind of stuff. and. You know, that's oh, is that sorority girl massacre? Is that the one where, like, as they count, like, you see the little ticker going up, like, as people die, like, yeah, rings bell, and it's like from the uh, was that sorority? Well, there's a bunch of them because, they, yeah, there's a bunch of those, like, how you start college, fucking, you know, massacre yeah. campus kind of shit, you know what I mean? You know, a friend of mine used to work at, yeah, work at train a train is just. <laughs> This fucking train just went. Well, you, you made me remember a friend of mine back in the 80s used to work at uh, Blockbuster. And he would like, you know, on the weekends, he would bring home like the, the you know, most bizarre movies. And there was a one which I, I think that was it, where it was like every time one of the girls got murdered, it was like a, they'd ring a bell. There was like a, a counter on the screen. It was it was pretty fucked up, but it was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucked up. Fucked up. Fucked yeah. up. It was Faces of Death. Oh my god! Yeah, I remember that series. The original Faces yeah. of Death, not the new released ones where they cut it all out. And yeah, yeah, the originals. That the Mutilator and Make Them Die Slowly. I just get chills even thinking about it. It was one of those movies where I think I just looked away. I was young and I was just like, I don't want to see that. I think right too real. I never. Oh, yeah. Did they ever say whether it was staged or real? I hope it was supposedly safe. it was real footage, and I think yeah, the suppo- original movie was, but after that, it wasn't. It was yeah, I think the no. first one was, and but yeah, and then it was banned in like thirty six countries after that or something. It's like okay, but anyway, let's bring that train back. Leo, yeah. where can they find out about this well, amazing guest? If you want to learn about our amazing guest, definitely check the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. He has a brand new movie called Swap Me Baby, which is available on Tubi. You can go there and watch it right now, but wait till after the show. Actually, yeah, after people, the show. After my show at nine. So, uh, you know, got to get the plug in. No, there's going to be another. <laughs> <show>. <laughs> nice, get nice. the plug in. Get the plug in. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll, we'll be live at nine, you know, talking about Black Adams. You okay. Know, and, uh, nice. Yeah. So I do want to ask, because you were born in Germany, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and how long, were you, how long did you live in Germany before you actually moved around? 18 before? years. You were there for 18 years? 18 years, yeah. Wow. Seven in the east. And then we, we bounced before the wall fell. Yes, I saw that. And then, um, yeah, and then to my 18th uh, year in, in West Germany. And then I went to London and then L.A. after that. 21, I think I got to L.A., 21 or 22. Wow. wow. Yeah. So you were in London for a couple of years? A couple of years and did the dancing there and tried a little bit of the acting, some workshops and here and that. Um, but, again, the, the dancing was more the, the problem thing. And then that got me to the States. Very cool. Very yeah. Cool. 
wow, it just got really quiet. What happened? So do you like playing a bad guy or a good guy? The bad guys are fun, man. You just have more freedom to kind of do Uh-oh. any anything kind of goes, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas the hero, it's it's always, oh, we lost somebody. He, he, yeah, he, 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 he got, got a phone call. call. Yeah. <laughs> he got a phone call. <laughs> Continue. Uh, the, the you know the bad guys are fun. You know you get you get to ham it up a little bit if you want to. You get to really explore and do some weird shit. Right. Um, there isn't so much. You don't have to be liked. The whole point is you don't. It's good if you're liked. You know, a likable bad guy. But you, you don't have to worry so much about you know carrying True. the audience through the whole piece. Right. You know. Um, but they're both fun. But for example, Whiplash or Backlash on Agents of Shield. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to have a mohawk and I got to kind of be just really fun and shitty, and that was really fun. Right. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up, but you beat me to it. <laughs> the fun quick that came out of nowhere. They they were like, Hey, do you want to play this part? Um I was like, Yeah, that sounds great. I get a little whip and all that fight stuff, and then it's just a fun character. Right. Well, also, you made the switch from uh, DC to Marvel, you know. Right. I don't know. You beat me to that. One step closer to the MCU, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. Oh, my. (laughs) Wow. I never got the answer to my question. We did. All of a sudden. Yeah, I know you did. (laughs) You'll have to go back and watch this later. (laughs) Yep. Love that guy. Would you get a phone call? Huh? Would you get a phone call? I have no idea. Oh, just vanished. It's all good though. It's great. It was an awesome you know? answer too. You missed it. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no. I'll go. I'll. You will get one more view. <laughs> we'll get one more view. <laughs> so, so how's the uh, the film industry in uh, Oregon? Or uh, do you do a lot of traveling? Or in the land of Oregon, it is. Uh... It's sparse. There isn't really. I haven't really done other than the stuff that I've produced. Um, not much here, to be really honest. And we'd like to change that. Um, it's all, it's all everywhere now. Anyway, that's why I moved. Uh, Hollywood has become so delocalized. Like mm-hmm. Hollywood is just a term for professional filmmakers, in my opinion. You know, you shoot it in London, you shoot it in Budapest, you shoot it in. Toronto, we shoot in Vancouver, you know, barely anything shoots in LA. Um, so yeah, wherever it takes me, I, I still travel mostly to do projects. And Oregon is not where we are, it's like hour and a half from LA, real fast connection, and then hour to an airport get that gets you around internationally. So now how far is it to like the woods? I live in the woods. If I could show you, I'm on like a 160 acre property by the river in the woods so i'm like away from cool. everything All right. cool yeah. Yeah. you got any nice. sasquatch i'm looking for him or her baby sasquatch yeah, yeah you gotta find a baby sasquatch when baby you find sasquatch. a baby sasquatch the regular doesn't count no 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 you, the, the, well the baby no, everybody's seen the regular one fair enough <laughs> that was actually funny because the sasquatch movie was supposed to be uh what we were going to make first instead of swap me baby no, don't. Yeah, well, if you're gonna do a Sasquatch movie, don't do a Sasquatch movie. We'll get together. We'll do a baby Sasquatch movie. We'll do baby right. Sasquatch movie. All right, baby Sasquatch. I can see the appeal. Family friendly. Yes. Right. Exactly. It, yeah. With well, yeah. Maybe. You know. <laughs> we'll set it around Christmas, and then we've got the whole. We can have the PG and the R. How's that? I like it. I like Two the different way you versions. Think. Right. <laughs> right. But. As he just mentioned, they released Swap Me Baby, which looks hilarious as hell. Thank so you. for all the people that are tuning in late, because, you know, that's how it is. You want to run that trailer again? Sure, sure. Hold on. One yeah, this is funny as fuck anyway. I want yeah, I want to see that again. How did this happen? He's, um... We had the sex. Mm. He's an escort. The condom broke. Mm. Wait, you paid for this? I mean, no offense. Oh, none taken. 
I have something that could help you spend the weekend here. Trust me. Welcome to the Baby Making Podcast. I really need you to listen to this. Something to consider, breast milk isn't vegan. Come on. I'm doing all of this for our baby. So am I. Taking mushrooms is not planned for a baby, Felipe. Oh. Tether. The box. We'll ensure you must work together. I can't keep doing these stupid challenges. I would like my body back. Forget all that. Enjoy the moment. All I ever try to do is figure out what to do, and I still don't know what I'm doing ever. Nobody knows what they're doing. No matter how crazy things are around you, it's all gonna be okay. We are something more than friends. We are something more than friends. We are something more. We are something more than friends. <gasps> oh my god! I have a penis. See? Get it off! Ah, no, no. Don't flap it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's the no way one. that ends. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, is no. There's a red band trailer somewhere out there as well. It's pretty funny. It is, it is. It does have you know, sex and that, all the good stuff in it. That is that's hilarious. hilarious. And yeah. you know what? To all the filmmakers and and film lovers out there, like if you support us by purchasing the movie or recommending it, um, the proceeds we share with the filmmakers once we make our money back on the film. 50 50 so whatever the company makes 50 percent of that goes to all the filmmakers and our profits you know beyond that will be used to to finance more projects so spread the word absolutely totally absolutely so this will be spread around a lot because right now we're streaming to i want to say 19 platforms worldwide nice and then this is going to get ripped down for podcast on all your major platforms. That's awesome. Congrats. So, well, no, congrats to you. Let's see, we're pushing that, pushing Swamp, yeah, uh, Swamp Me Baby. You know, a big dream. You know, if we could, if we could be a company, you know, we were trying to push original content. You know, we're trying to push a mm-hmm. space where, you know, the artists are free from the mandates and the algorithms that tell them what does the audience want to watch right now. You know, what makes money, and instead of just sort of going, well, what's inspiring you? What do you want to talk about? What touches you? Right. Um, so it's really it, it means a lot to me to to somehow get that going. It's a very difficult space right now to make original content and entertainment uh, that isn't driven by, well, frankly, just profit. Right. Yeah. Right. It's driven by love or greed. You can say love and passion. Yeah. Passion behind the projects. Yeah. You know, and one of your passions, from what I've read, is uh, something called tasting tours. Tasting tours. Yes, like when you're in a city, you you like to. Oh eat, shit! Where did you eat, where did you find that? That's a. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to tell you where I found it. That's <laughs> yeah. So we we you know Kim and I, uh, who was in the movie with me, my lovely life partner, we would go to to a city, uh, pick a place for an appetizer that we knew from somebody or Yelp or whatever, and then once we had the appetizer, ask the waiter or the chef and just be like, "Where do you like?" send us somewhere for the next meal and then we would go and take an uber or whatever to the next place and then we'd go somewhere else for the uh for the dessert and just sort of like sampling around um really fun so that's kind of a cool way to have dinner right right Right? yeah it makes it a whole like date night and you know you have a good time you get to know places and it takes bar hopping to a new level right right it's restaurant hopping restaurant hopping, and you can include the bar at the end too and just keep going all night Right. Or as he calls it, tasting tours. So, tasting in your tours. in your opinion, what's one of the 
give us one of the best cities that you've kind of eaten your way through. It used to be Portland. I love Portland. I have to say before Portland just got whatever happened in Portland, but everything shut down. All the really nice restaurants shut down. Then London is really great. London has some great food. Um, Vancouver, Vancouver, Canada mm -hmm. has incredible restaurants. Um, yeah, those are probably my top, my top, uh, three. Okay. Now that was a two part question to that. So the best dish that you've had. Oh man, that's a difficult one. <laughs> man. See, I like to eat food, so I want to know. <laughs> I don't I don't know that I remember exactly what it was, but I just love you know what I love when I can we, we we try to always like compliment the chef when we like something and like talk to them a little bit. I just love when you can tell that whoever is making the food loves what they're doing. You know, another thing that we love to do is to just at a good restaurant say, What is the what does the chef love to cook? What's his favorite dish? And an answer that comes where you're like, okay, not here is like everything on the menu is great. He loves everything. I'm like, that's not, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. Get it. I'm trying to say tonight, like if he was like done here and he has one more thing to cook, what would he choose? You know, I just love, I, I love, you know, that to just sort of go, oh, I, I got to experience something that this, this dude or gal really, really love, you know, that they put their, their passion into it. Let um, the artist be the artist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm here to be amazed by you. Like you're you're the I expert. want to eat. What would you like to cook for me? Exactly. Very exactly. Good. I'll take that answer. I'll take that answer. But the key behind what you said there was just like with filmmaking, the passion yeah. behind it. Yes. You know, so that's I'm yeah. hugely passionate and that's what I'm seeking in, in everything. That's what I'm trying to find, you know, that's what I've been lacking. And then I'm, I want more of that in my life. Very nice. Mm -hmm. so, so you mentioned that uh, you enjoy chopping wood. Uh, <laughs> what, what is there something that you dork out about? Like, uh, you know, uh, we had uh, Bruce Valanche on and he liked, uh, you know, uh, researching like uh, sunken vessels and, and, you know, really deep and dive deeping in, you know, pun and in, not intended, uh, into that stuff. Uh, like, 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 uh, are you, are you a gamer? Do you like collecting things? Uh, you know, what? Man, that's another really good question and a, and a difficult one. I, uh, I mean, I'm a psychonaut. You know, I do a lot of trauma release work myself. Like I work with plant medicine, so that world. Oh, is thank fast. God! I thought it was the, you tie Pete, you tie yourself up all the time. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, like, oh I, God, I thought. What it, the hell is that? I, I thought it was the game. You know. I mean, there there should be one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's a game, Psycho. Oh, there is. Yeah, I gotta check that out. Um, I mean, I love horses. You know, I just went on a trip into the mountains. I, I love to pretend that I'm a, a hardcore cowboy. I'm not. I'm far from it. But um, I have really gotten into the horses and horsemanship and uh, very late in life. But I, yeah, I could geek out on horses. Nice. Yeah, horses are, they're majestic animals. Yeah. Yes, uh, I, 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 they let I us don't do horses. You don't do it? No, I can't do horses. I went to this Good. place, Hanover. My wife wanted to bring me for my first horseback ride, right? So we get there, and they're like, did you ever ride a horse before? She's all, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no. No, bring out Nugget. So they bring nugget. out this this white horse, Nugget. The thing had to be, I don't know, 135 <laughs> years old. Its back was like this. It was all, like, curved down and shit. The thing, it couldn't even trot, let alone walk. <laughs> And they put me on that thing, you know what I mean? I was. In but you know what? That's that's better than they putting you on a on a three year old. You know, that's just gonna go. That's just gonna off, run when it's supposed to run. run. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably, but. Nugget. Know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I hope the horse enjoyed it because he didn't seem to. Here's to, here's to Nugget. Here's you to know? Nugget. <laughs> when uh, so, when when I was young, uh, we we went uh. uh or something similar to go uh, horseback riding. And uh, 
you know, I, I was last in the group. So, you know, I got, I didn't get to run to the litter. They put me on a friggin' Clydesdale. So, <laughs> oh my God. And I kicked him <laughs> wrong and holy shit, he took off fast and they glide. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so we've wow. got about five minutes left with this amazing guest folks. So everybody that's in the chat watching or if you have a question, now's the time or forever hold your peace. I'm telling you, because we're I just going to, we're just going to keep asking them questions and shooting the shit. Cause that's kind of what we do. I love that. If you could, if you could do a film with anybody, who would you pick? Oh man. Another good question of the hard ass question. <laughs> Alive or, or, or can they be dead? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think you could film yeah, with okay. them if they were yeah, dead. No, but yeah, yeah. But yes, that's you could. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Paul Newman seems like he would have been a blast to work with. Um, I love, as a director especially, I love Mel Gibson. Yeah, I know, I know. There's all the, you know. Did you see a Santa movie? Bad Santa? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Fat Man. Yeah, yep. I, yeah. Did, I did see it, wow, yeah. That was fucked up. That was a, that was a gr uh, crazy concept. I almost did a film with those directors, the, the new one, The Red Right Hand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he he he's somebody I'd love to work with. And then, God, there's so many. Sylvester Stallone. Mm. I wouldn't mind doing something with Sly. Just all like my my childhood. I could, I, I could see you in like Expendables Five. Five? Say, Aren't we already at five? No, I, uh, are we? No, yeah, we're I at four. We're at. <laughs> I think they're at four. <laughs> I think they're coming out with four. Yeah, those are great movies. Though. Yeah, I could see you in that. You do, you know, you could be a good dude that gets plastered against the wall. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> the tough guy number number seven. Thanks, no, Jeff. I appreciate your, <laughs> appreciate your confidence in my in my ability. <laughs> well, we know he could play a streaker, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you can hit him with his hammer. So, there's so many talented folks. It's like. And I had the chance. I was got lucky, you know. I got to work with some of some of those heroes of my childhood really early on, like Tom Cruise, Cameron Diaz, mm -hmm. and then uh, Morgan Freeman. We didn't have much in the scenes, but he was somebody I always wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of talent. I love all the the Swedish and Danish guys too, like uh, Mats Mikkelsen. Um, not Danish, but Viggo Mortensen is another guy that I feel like it just, just again, is fun. You know, I feel like you can be like, you want to go fly fishing or you want to ride a horse, you know, on, on the time off. Like, that's that's what I'd be really interested in. Like, yes, on screen, that's great, too. But, like, do you know, can we connect? Right, right. Yeah. That's awesome. So my last question, my last question for you uh, is, out of all the things that you have been part of, what were some of your favorites? And you, I'm not going to make you like pick moments? one favorite. Yeah, yeah. Your favorite yeah. Moments. I mean, yeah, Swap Me Baby is the overall probably one of the best experiences because I got I got to do it with my life partner. She was pregnant, so it's like the most expensive home video I've ever shot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and it was just fun. Like I, you know, I don't I don't get to do a lot of comedy in Hollywood, Hollywood, in the studio world. Um, working with Zemeckis was, uh, did one of those childhood dreams. Forrest Gump is one of my top five. Mm -hmm. And so just to watch him work, um, was just really cool, you know, to just see how he does stuff. Um, my very first film night and day watching what Tom Cruise does, how he is on a set and Cameron Diaz being so supportive with me as like a young buck that didn't really know what he was doing. Um, I've been lucky. There's 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 not very many experiences that I didn't really really cherish. Um, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Good uh, answer. Yeah. Uh, I'll follow that up with uh, uh, my last question here is um, out of everything that you've done, was there anything that you've kind of like liberated from the set? Like, did you take home like an extra mace from Hawkman or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, what'd you steal from this? Let me, let me put it this way. I always want to, but they've made it increasingly harder to do that. I finally, on my 100th episode, got the original outfit that I designed 
for Carter Hall, which is very different than what we ended up doing. Um, I designed them very like kind of stuck in an older time and a bit more classy, like Tony Stark. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she was, and they didn't let me have that. They didn't use it, but finally the costume designer was like, here you go. And I did keep one of the jackets that I wore as Carter Hall. Didn't get the costume. I think that's like a $60,000 costume. That's why they're like, oh, wow. no, um, not the mace. Yeah, not for you. Yeah, yeah not for me, not for me. <laughs> oh shit, you guys, I just realized it's 5.05 .05 and I got another interview at five. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, well, I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up. up. Yeah. You have fun with that. Yeah, Dude, you guys are awesome. I love this format. I love the, just hanging and, and talking like that. It's it's awesome. Yeah, no, we uh we appreciate you coming over and hanging thank out. You for taking the time, man. So uh Leo. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Do you I wanna, yeah, I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. For me, just Google Leo Pond. You find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. But I run the Dorkening Podcast Network. Head on over to thedorkening.com for all the latest episodes there. And tune in at 9. We're going to be doing another show. And uh, Falk, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Right now, uh, probably Instagram, at Falk Henschel. That's probably the easiest way to get a, get a hold of me. DM me or you know hit me up in a comment. I'll check that myself. Awesome. awesome. Jeffrey. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, Stilltoken.com. I'm not going to delay anything. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go watch Swap Me Baby. There you go. Benjamin. I second that. First thing I'm going to do is eat and then go watch Swap Me Baby. But, <laughs> yeah, you're you know, not. You know, like Jeff said, stilltoken.com. You can find out everything you want to know about the amazing guests in the show notes up above or down below. We want to thank Falk for coming out and hanging with us tonight. We had a blast. Um, Make sure you send our sincere apologies to your next interview. We did not mean to You're keep you there. Listen, I would I would hang with you guys longer. That sounds. And no, I'll, I'll, we'll and do it again. We'll do it again. Yeah, I'd love that. We'll definitely do it again. To all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do, so people like us can do what we do. Stay safe. We'll see you. We're out of here. Bye. Take care, you guys. Take care. Take care. Oh, I hit the wrong button. What else?